Hey, everyone. Welcome to Episode 7 of the Experts Podcast. I'm your host, Natalie Eganoff, broadcasting from the beautiful Parks Pod studio here at Parks Casino in Ben Salem. Uh, Spring has sprung. Lots going on here at the casino. Lots going on at the racetrack. Uh, If you didn't check out last week's episode with Chris Griffin, make sure that you go to the Apple Store or the Spotify Store store i think that's what it's called spotify download the experts podcast like a subscribe please leave a review this is my new podcast it's my new baby i'm really proud of it it's a gambling industry podcast so what i'm trying to do here if you haven't listened yet is give you insight from all sorts of the gambling world i work with bet parks um but we're also here at parks casino so this is an effort to kind of let people know what's going on in the gambling world have some fun with this tell some cool stories so i'm really excited Today is my first day, producer Mark Feldman, with two guests. Not one, but two. We have two guests today. Uh, First, Jason Conley. He's CRM manager at Parks Casino. And Stanley Banosh. 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 I I just targeted you. Stanley Banich, he's sportsbook risk and trade specialist. That's is that the do I have the written these down wrong? What's your that's that's his old title. That's your old title. title. Oh, see, okay. So this is good. So I've got old information here, and that's why we're here. Talk to you guys. So this episode is called Two Peas in a Pod because in my time here, I've learned that Jason and Stan are both two peas in a pod. Um, started here at Parks Casino. Uh, now, we t- kind of went over this a little bit. Um, who started first? Okay, so Stan, why don't you tell me about your journey at Parks, uh, what you started as, and kind of what you do now? Cool. Yeah, uh, so long time ago, back in 2008, I walked in to audition as a barback. Oh. So at the time, you had to audition to do certain things here, right? So I had to audition to be a barback. What does that audition entail? Uh, a lot of dancing, answering some silly questions. Uh, dancing? Yeah, yeah. We had to dance on stage. We had to walk like a fake runway and all this kind of stuff. It was fun. If you've ever done the audition or watched the audition, it's pretty funny. Wait, this was and this was in 2000, not, oh, 2008. So this was when Parks first opened. Yeah, I, was, I started in the old building at the horse track. Wow. I didn't know they had dancing barbacks. Well, I didn't become a barback. Okay. <laughs> immediately to audition to be a cocktail server. So okay. That's what I did. I was a parkman. A parkman. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, this guy hired me to work under him in the sport book. Okay, cool. So now this is, we'll transition now. Jason, tell me about your history here with Park Parks and how how you ended up in the sports book now. Because you and I were working. Journey. It is a journey. So <laughs> we, have plenty of time. we have time. All right. Now, ready? Go. So I started in 2010. Uh-huh. Um, I got hired as a guest service manager. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's the allergies. I probably That's know. okay. Uh, so in 2010, I got hired as guest service manager. They weren't really sure like what the guest service manager job was going to be. Right, because it was so um, new still, right? It's, yeah. It's still, they're still not really sure. No. <laughs> so I, I literally did everything. Mm-hmm. Um, my first probably like four or five months, I was out in ballet. So I learned ballet. Okay. Then ma- they moved me into side to player services. Okay. So I did player services for a couple weeks. Um, I did food and beverage. So I kind of learned like a little bit of about everything yeah in the casino which is really cool wait so you were my manager before you were my manager yes i was his manager before his manager D- and you did you didn't know that no. he was your well, manager. I, I guess i didn't really think about that until right now wow yeah so they they would so back back in like 2010 2011 there was literally one like food and beverage manager that yeah was it. like okay. now there's like six food managers and well, I, I, well, I mean there's like 55,000 restaurants right and... but back then it was one person that kind of did it all and then we had like uh, myself and two other guys were guest service managers so we would just fill in wherever they needed they're like hey you know player service needs help go help player services and we're like okay sure food and beverage needs help like right go do pre-shift for the parkettes right so you're like okay. the utility yeah like you're like the utility player kind of yeah, yeah. so yeah. I had to learn a little bit about like everything right you know which was cool and then uh, I did that for about eight years. Yeah. And then I got approached to take a job in HR as like the training and, and development um, person. Okay. For, for lack of a better term, <laughs> which was cool. Uh, and one of my, my main jobs doing that was it was right when sports betting was passed. Um, they made it legal for all the states. Okay. To decide whether they wanted it or not. So oh, right. Pennsylvania voted and they decided they were going to get sports betting. Right. 
So I was really interested in sports betting because I, I played sports my whole life. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, I may or may not have made a casual bet here and there. So I was, <laughs> just say right, yeah, just, you may you know, have dabbled. I look, might have tried is, with illegal offshore books, but who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah. But this is look, this is a judgment free podcast yeah, and judgment free yeah. zone. And look, I've I've addressed it before in the experts where there is a but we're trying to show people that gambling is fun and you can do it safe. You know what I mean? Right. And like everybody, everybody has gambled. I think in one form or another, my, you know, my grandmother played the lottery every day. She walked to the corner store and picked her numbers every single day. You know what I mean? So like my it, grandma actually would write down the numbers from previous lottery because she, she swore there was a pattern. Yeah. <laughs> This guy, it must run in your family because there's always a system with Jason. Well, I was gonna always. say, so it's in your, it's in your blood. It's, a, it's in the DNA. Yeah. Is this, is, yes. this, is this grandmother Conley? No. Or is this? This, uh, this is uh, my mom's mom. Okay, your mom's yeah. mom. Yeah. So she's the one. It, we can thank her for yes. how you yes. ending up. You end up. You can, we can thank her for probably like uh, my love of sports too. My my oh. grandma was probably the biggest hockey fan. Like you, weird, right? Like so she could name every player on the yeah. Devils. Like. Oh. She was a devil's fan. So we're going to, yeah. we're going to get to that. How Jason's a New York guy. Right. Um, but just, sorry. Tell, we're off no, 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 <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. So tell me then how you said that you, you know, you guys worked together, you were his boss and then you hired him in the sports book. Right. So, so back in HR, I basically wrote um, a whole PowerPoint and did a training for about 200 of the park staff to train them on sports betting because it was new for a lot of people so no one really knew what sports betting was so to get everyone familiar with sports betting and to be able to answer questions on the floor and stuff like that i created this whole powerpoint this two-hour training course or whatever wow so after that was done and the sports book was opening i kind of made it clear i'm like hey i kind of want to transition into into the sports book and, right. and be a manager there right it, it worked out obviously that's awesome uh, and then when we built the new sports book we were looking to hire an extra an extra supervisor. So Stan, yeah. did I approach you or you approached me? I don't know. Uh, I think we just approached each other. Yeah. You guys are probably middle. Well, yeah. you guys are probably just hanging out. Probably were hanging yeah. out. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it was yeah. like, hey guys, look, look, this is this is happening. So then so have you been with the sports book since the um since it opened? Uh since the new book opened. Since the new book opened. Yeah, right. I got hired right before the new book opened. I got to watch with my cocktail server tray <laughs> from the outside of the sports book <laughs> while everybody was cutting ribbons and stuff like that and just wishing I was in there with them. You're like, but, one day, yeah, yeah. I was like, she will be mine. <laughs> oh, yes. Beverages, anybody? No, no, no. Yeah. I'm like, Stan, come in. It's yeah. cool. Like, no, really. Come check it out. Yeah. So then not long after that, I was able to hop in there and Jay and the other guys taught me the ropes in there. And yeah, I've been sports book guy since. Now, and it's so funny. I think it's interesting, too, because you two are such good friends. You have a ton of stories, some that you're going to share with me. But I, I think it's great that, you know, you, you're both in the same world and you are kind of like behind the computer doing it. But Stan, you're in the sports book. I'm front line. You are. You yeah. are on the front line. So I am. You've seen. I'm sure you've seen a lot. Uh, you've shared some stories with me, some that yes. we can't say on the air, some that we we might dabble into, but you know, when I first started here, you knew me from the radio. Yeah. So, so nice, like came up and said hi to me and you were like, yeah, like I have a ton of stories here. And I'm like, well, <laughs> once this podcast happens, we got to get this guy on because one of the first stories that you told me, or one of the first things you sent me was this guy who gambled, he, he put a bet in and he won and he got the tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. So he is one of our uh, more elite guests, I guess you would call him. Okay. And he, he swore up and down. When I hit this bet, I'm gonna get this tattoo. <laughs> yeah, look at this thing. Oh, yeah. Jay, did you see this? I have. This is the first time I'm seeing it. Isn't and that insane? Yeah. The actually. level of detail on this tattoo is is incredible. It's first a of all, so I promise you, when he told me that he was gonna do it, I laughed at him. I was, I was like, you're, you're, there's zero chance that you're gonna actually pull through with this. And he did. He sent me that text message right there. Yeah. And said, I told you I was gonna. So do I've it. heard the story of the tattoo. And now, I literally, I literally thought it was like a little tattoo on his wrist. Or oh. I didn't realize it was an entire sleeve. Then, yeah, so, if you yeah, if you yeah. scan the barcode, it says bet already cashed. No, it doesn't. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> no. I, I, I believe it was. I was like, I thought, is it Wait. legit barcode? I believed you too, and I no. feel like that would have been insane. Yeah, that if, would. Uh, if, if I I'm, wonder if that would work, actually. Should we call him in? It would. I mean, you can you can just put in any numbers into a barcode generator, and it 
and it'll work. The barcode. I don't but know how do you can actually we use, like, it. So when I was little, this is a fun fact about me. I wanted to be a singing cashier. I don't really know exactly. <laughs> what? A, I made it up. Oh, uh, okay. But you know what? I always like the beepy. I always ah. like the scan thing. So maybe if we get one of those beepy things from like self checkout, and we invite the guy back to the sports book, and I'll just scan them. Yeah, we'll just, if it works. we'll just beepy him. If he, if he who will not be named Tattoo Man, if you're listening and you'd like to come in, we won't tell anybody who you are or what you do. But like, I just like to scan your tat to see uh, if it if it works and maybe if it will say what is it? Bet cash down. Yeah, uh, bet. <laughs> Contains see, voided bets or, <laughs> or something. I, see, but like if that was me with my tattoo, I'd be in the supermarket scanning the <laughs> park. <laughs> I'd be scanning my yeah, my ADD I'd would be like, D -D. Uh, everywhere I would be. Yeah, I like you know when you can like price check in Target, I'd be like, let's see if it works. Yeah. You know, um, have you have you talked about this? like does he regret this tattoo or does he, has, he still enjoy it? He has zero. Let me, uh, zero regret. Can I just Sorry. can I just say something about what I think about um, anybody who has the you know balls. For lack of better words, this is that's a is a PG. I mean, maybe I'll beep it out. Beep it out. Um, for anybody who has the balls to to gamble like that, I'm not one of those person. Those people. I'm like here for the penny slots. I like to play my little parlays or in the playoffs. Right. You know what I yeah. mean? Not anymore since I'm you know I work in gambling. Of course. And I can't gamble because I work in gambling. However, when I did, I was just a small dabbler. I was a small dabbler. You know what I mean? So I feel like if you're somebody who is like I'm gonna make this big ass bet. And then I'm gonna get a tattoo of it if it wins. I'm pretty sure that like you're go you're a go big or go home person. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's him. Right? He's, yeah. He's got a very big personality. So he's he's hit some bets and he's lost some. Yeah, and he's lost some. Uh, so so now he places this is like in person. So Jason, we call the T's and C's guy, who I work with directly for a lot of my what are the odds, a lot of the campaigns that you know we're starting to ramp up here now that Bet Parks. Is officially launched. It's been a work in pro progress. Jason, you've been working on it. I mean, for years. I, you, I started here last June, um, and you're in control of kind of like the T's and C's. So the terms and conditions. <laughs> the T's so, and C's. And this Mark is, Feldman. Is that what they meant? T's and Mark, C's. Mark Feldman. Mean? Yes. Yeah. Mark Feldman loves T's and C's. Well, I, I, we, I feel like we just say it all the time now. It's a joke. Time. It's a running it's joke. It's the a T's running and C's. Joke. Yeah. And especially because I, you know, I'm new here, so I'm learning all this lingo. Like again, I know like over unders you know your standard sports bets but then when you get into this world there's so much more lingo there's so much more yeah. language you know and i'm i come from the oldest communication medium known to mankind where we were literally handing papers to each other every day like this is what you're doing you know what i mean right. and then you hand a paper to somebody like, right nobody uses paper anymore radio does um so oh we do downstairs <laughs> yeah no, but you know so i i come here and i'm learning all this stuff so jason's the t's and c's guy so when he's creating all these campaigns He's the terms and conditions. Yeah, so, that which is probably the worst part about creating any promo is actually writing these terms and conditions because it's right. it's so boring. But it's probably the most important thing because if you leave one word out, you're going to get people saying, "Hey, this isn't fair. You you said this, but it right. actually meant this." So the terms and conditions are, are definitely the most important part to to any promo to make sure that it runs successfully exactly and this is also a personal uh psa for me uh because jason writes all the t's and c's right and i'm sharing all these promos on my social I feel like you this know. should be a drinking game every time we say t's and c's, t's, and t's. well we'll do it next time next time on the experts <laughs> podcast um but i you know every time we do this i'm getting messages and it's like well it's in the terms and conditions and it's one of those things where you don't necessarily read the small print, but then it's like, maybe you should sometimes. So that's what the T's and C's are for. That's what the terms and conditions are for on the promos that you bet on or whatever it is that you're doing if you're using the it, Bet Parks app. It is a good PSA to make sure to read the terms and conditions. Because yes. if you don't <laughs> and you make a bet and you think you qualify for a promo and you didn't, it's right. it's probably because you didn't read the terms and conditions. Well, and honestly, so I've been I've been reading them any of these briefs, there's briefs, there's all sorts of paperwork involved, very, you know, there's a lot of laws around gambling, so I'm learning. So, um it's it's not just like you go to, you know, your old neighborhood pal on the bar stool. Not that I ever did that yeah. either. No. Um, no. <laughs> it's not Uncle Vinny it's at the not, corner yeah. bar. It's not Uncle that. Vinny <laughs> no, at the corner bar. He didn't have he didn't have like a long scroll where he would pull out and be like, read this before you place your bet. Um, no, but it's uh, it's really important. And so you have these intricacies and I, I'm reading them and I'm like, what the heck does all this language mean? So it's always funny when I'm working with Jason, I'm saying, I'm like, you know, just let's like make it a little more succinct because I'm like a keep it simple person, <laughs> yeah. you know? So 
Jason's been amazing working with me. Like I said, Stan, you've been great since I've been here. But now let's now that we've got all of your, you know, serious work out of the way, let's talk about the, the dirt. The nitty gritty. The nitty gritty. The nitty. So you told me there were some stories. Um now oh what about the guy? <laughs> I need to hear again about the guy with no movement. Oh so, man. So we, you glossed <clears throat> over this yesterday right. when we were kind of talking about what we we're gonna talk about today. And I and I said, I don't want to do I never want to do the show before the show. And so I need to hear this. So there was a guy who was frozen. Yeah, he was. He was very. So I actually think it was a Eagles playoff game. It was packed. It, it was. was it was packed at okay. the sports ball. Okay. Like, uh, every and you're there was, hanging out, Jay. No, no, I was working. Oh, you were working. Yeah, yeah we were all working. You were so both was, working. Yeah, okay. It was back when I was still in the sports book. So we we were. I think all four of us were yeah, there the at four that time because yeah. it was. Like, yeah, it was probably an Eagles playoff game. Um, and, and every was, yeah. kiosk was packed, and. I, Jay and I are standing there and I look over, sorry to cut you off, and I see a guy and it looks like he's looking at the big TVs above him. Right. But he's just, he just <laughs> didn't stop looking and he stayed very frozen. So I said to Jay, I was like, uh, is this guy okay? I like, Jay, I think there's something wrong with that guy over there. So the first thing I always, I, just, I always call security. Let's call security. Let them call him. Like, cause I'm not, I'm, I'm not. You know, an EMT. Yeah, well, I was a lifeguard, but I'm not an EMT. Well, so like, or an EMT, or like confrontational. Like, you're not equipped to deal with a frozen. Well, I, there was no <laughs> confrontation. <laughs> Wait, so he was yeah, just. Yeah. Can you? All right. So the, if you could just, I can describe it this. Way. How's this? How's this look? Is he like close? It was it's head, like like the running more, man. Head more up. Okay. Hunter and we, like I said, we thought we was watching the game Did, until we right. went over to him. Okay. You ever watch Saved by the Bell when you were a kid? Yes. Okay. You remember when Zach Morris used to go time out and everybody? Everyone would freeze. Uh, yeah. It's, that's it's like it, somebody it called time out on him. <laughs> yes, that's it was the that. best way to describe it. Someone called time out on him and he just got and stuck. He, or he was playing freeze tag and like took it real seriously yeah. and was waiting for somebody to unfreeze him. So what right. did, so you called security. We called security. Security came and like we were trying to get him just to like sit or lie back, but like his his joints and everything everything was, was frozen was stuck so yeah. like you couldn't bend his like his legs wouldn't bend his arms wouldn't bend nothing so i think they had it, to, i think they literally like laid him back on the full body on the ground Just, right and yeah. then the, and then the emts came put him on a stretcher and took him away and did you he, ever find out what was wrong well he came back at like he came back. He came back he came later not, that, that yeah, night. Not long. Yeah. I want to say, I don't know if with, you guys, with the hospital bracelet and everything. No. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you guys, have you ever um are any either of you Harry Potter fans? My no. wife is a huge Harry Potter. Okay, fan. so then you probably I, know the petri the petrification. Um, I, I've spell. seen it. I can't recall it off the top of my head. Uh, it's not. I, it might actually be Wingardium Leviosa. No, that's the levitating one. Um, but <laughs> that it, English. Or... <laughs> it, well, I'm you know just saying my spells. But I would have been like, "Are you petrified? Did you see like the ghost or whatever that is?" <laughs> the like, ghost of Carson Wentz's the, knee. <laughs> yeah, the ghost of Carson Wentz's knee. Yeah, it sound it sounds like he was just frozen. So he came back. What did he say? Uh, we, did I you think say we, anything? I think I asked him. I was like, "Hey, were you okay?" He was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I'm fine." And he never addressed it. I was just like, listen, never you can't really. be in here right now. Like, you got taken out. On a stretcher. Right. So wait, when they put him on the stretcher, was he still frozen? I think he was coming to then. Yeah. Do you think maybe he he was just like in some sort of like strange catatonic state? <sighs> well, I wonder what the clinical diagnosis is. The for. clinical there is a clinical <laughs> diagnosis. We're all which, doctors which here, we, clearly. We probably won't get into his clinical diagnosis here. Okay. But he did come back. He bounced back. Yeah. So that was a good thing. And he just came back to the sports book like nothing had happened. Yeah, yeah. He totally played it off. I yeah. feel like I'd like put on like a hat and sunglasses. Oh, there was there was no it was like the ultimate like walk of shame, but he had no shame. Yeah, he just came back. And May, I mean, maybe he maybe it's a condition where that happens, but I can't imagine witnessing something like that. Like it, were were you both just like what is happening right now? How long was he standing there for? <laughs> it was probably a good five minutes. Yeah, I've never just it was, frozen. It was crazy. Just yes. frozen. Yes. And I've seen a lot of like weird, like crazy stuff in the casino, but I've never seen, I've never seen anything like that. Well, and it's, <laughs> of course, I'm like, if it's an Eagles playoff game, you, you might find yourself in shock once or twice. I can't even yep. imagine what the play was that probably set him into that kind of, <laughs> yeah, kind of state. yeah, we don't know, but no. this is, the, this is the same guy though, who, uh, walked, who got a blind person to pay him to no. walk him around and show him the casino. Yeah. He told, uh, he told the guy that he worked at the casino. No, and no. For twenty dollars, he would walk no. him around and sh like help him out. How did, how did you how did you find that out? Uh, I think the blind guy asked us if yeah. he still had his twenty or not. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So wait, so it was he, the same day. 
It was the same day he froze. Wait, wait, yeah. what? It was all the same day, yes. No. It was within like two hours. Yeah. Wait, so two hours of Skype. Was he like a, were there cameras? Was he pl pulling pranks? We don't know. Is he just somebody <laughs> who just thinks that he, you he, know, maybe? He was kind of a regular in the sports book, um, but he wasn't like a likable regular. Okay. Nicest yeah. way to put it. Well, I mean, I mean, to, if you're freezing and and then coming back and asking a blind person to walk so around, before, or... it was before yeah. he froze. Yeah, he, he, he met the blind guy and then he froze. So I, <laughs> right. I, I like to call it like instant karma. Like, instant, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know. I still don't even know what to make of it. <laughs> the frozen guy also has a sleep tattoo. Okay. Her, with with that slips on there. No. 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 Uh, <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is all not the no, same no. guy that we're sharing the stories about. Oh my goodness. That's so that's that's just one of the great stories. And then like random things that you guys notice. Is there anything else that you can think of that's happened where you've just been like, what's going on here? Or even if Stan, you're there when people are winning and losing. What's yeah. that like? I don't well actually I thought of I don't know if you should want to tell the story or not, but the guy that was tugging on your ear when oh, you were server. Yeah. Well oh, if we if we could do this all day long <laughs> with the stories from the casino. Um I'll hit the sports book one first though. Just recently, I had a guy clipping his fingernails and just throwing it on the ground. What? So I walked over to him. I said, hey, listen, sir, if you don't mind, like, you can't clip your fingernails in here. Okay? Right. Instantly, he, he's like, well, why not? Like, well, you're in a casino <laughs> in a sports book that I'm trying to keep clean, and it's just not a good look. So I was like, so I'm going to need you to pick up the fingernails that you already cut and throw them out. Oh, my God. You would think that as an adult, he would have been like, you're right. I'm sorry. No, he complained to everybody about how I stood there and made him pick up his fingernails. Well, what would possess you to clip your fingernails in public anyway? I mean, maybe if you're driving right. and you're like, ah, this one's bothered me and you rip it off and you're like throwing you like maybe like throw it out the window or throw it in a trash can, whatever. But like uh, clipping your finger, like it just like no sense, like personal no. hygiene, nope. nothing. OK, nope. the amount okay. of times that I had to tell people to put their shoes back on when I was working in the sports book would shock you. Yeah. And not the fact that I had to ask them to put their shoes back on, but the fact that they would get mad at me right. that I was asking them to put their shoes. Why do I have to put my shoes on? Well, first of all, why are we still having this conversation? But, I mean, isn't it just standard practice everywhere? I mean, anywhere that you go, no shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> right. That's that sign has been posted on every door since yeah. the beginning like I, of of time. No I shirt, understand the, no the, shoes. The seats are comfy. Oh, so comfy. Yeah, I was just gonna say. But, let's, let's make it very clear. The four of us were down there yesterday sitting. You and it's and you're comfortable. You could easily take your shoes off oh, and fall asleep. Oh, a but, thousand percent. Right. But, but we don't can we don't push that. No, no. And also nobody wants to see your feet. It's almost like the one time you ever go to the movies and you have the people who foot, put your feet oh, behind oh, you. On the, the yeah. And the one time I, I had like some guys like bare crusty. And oh. I, so my sister, who has no qualms going anywhere and telling tickled. anybody anything. <laughs> yeah. She actually <laughs> And then I think he thought because yeah. it was it was dark and she did she was <laughs> like this, and then I think that I think he thought like that maybe it was whatever, and then she finally went up and got the guy, and you know the guy came in and was like, please take your feet away, like out of this woman's ear. Um, so they're now dating. They're now dating. <laughs> we're in love. No, <laughs> um, no. So it's weird that people just like think that. They're, I mean, maybe because they spend so much time or they just feel so comfortable there. They take off their shoes. So the one thing I will admit is customers that come to the casino a lot feel like they're like family to the casino, which they are. We appreciate well, every single customer that we do have. Well, no, I know. But know. again, sh no shirt, no shoes, no service. Right. There, right? there is a line, though, that you just can't cross. No. And that was one of them. Well, yes. And again, it's it's not, that's not just a park specific rule. You should wear your yeah, shoes in just, any. It's common courtesy. It's common yeah, courtesy right. to just have your shoes on. Again, I don't know why we business. have to say it. But right. Like, but you look, do. Yeah. Look, and, and actually post pandemic, people are trying to figure out how to like live again. Right. So nobody's really sure. They're like, I've been home. Why can't I wear shoes? Um, <laughs> All right. So I want to talk to you guys, too. Uh, so you see a, pe a lot of people winning and losing and you're on the back end. You hear, you know, a lot of the people winning and losing on the online side. So Sixers played last night. Mm. Did they? Did they? They, they you, didn't. Right. And you were in the sports book. I was. Yes. How? Walk me through a night of a playoff loss so, in the park sports book. So it is cool because we get to control the lights, the sound, everything like that. So I put the Sixers lights on, cranked up the volume. The crowd was buzzing. 
we probably are sitting at 80 percent capacity. So if you've been in the sports book, you know, 80 percent in there is is a pretty big crowd. Yeah. Bar was full. And right from the tip, Harden scores. They go up two nothing. And I think they go up four nothing right. after a Harden dunk. And then after that, you just knew it was coming. The downslide, the downslide, the downslide. Customers were screaming at the TVs throughout the whole night. The only good thing was the Nets game was on right next to it. Yeah. And they lost. And they lost. So it was kind of like balancing it right. out. Yeah. But that was huge. But when you're sitting in the sports book, you're not always a fan of the game. You're a fan of what you bet. Yeah. So there was a lot of Nets betters there last night. Wow. So they were mad at that. Right. And those Nets betters were, are actually Sixers fans. So it was just a lot of screaming and yelling. It wasn't a good scene last night. No, no. So how did you feel about the game? How do you I, feel about the team? Do you think it's do you think it's Joel? I mean, just the fact that he's injured now is hard on a bust. Because I've seen people tweeting now. They're saying if uh, if they lose this, they want Maury, Doc, and Harden nah, to go. And I'm Doc, like, Doc, definitely Doc, maybe go. because right. that bet, like you know, he just can't figure out what to do with the bet. Right. So, if, if Joe's gone, it, it just seems like the whole team kind of falls apart, and people are overcompensating. Thibel's throwing. I don't know where he was throwing. Right. He was he was trying. I'm like air balls, air balls everywhere. Like yeah, he, Danny he, Green. Had Danny to Green. Yeah, yeah, it was insane. So I mean, do you think that they're going to be able to pull this one out? I and, do. So statistically, and then Jay can speak on that kind of. Yes. Thing. Like losing four games in a row in the playoffs is when you're up three nothing. Right. I zero percent. I don't know. Less than one percent. Has ever happened? In yeah, the I don't NBA? think it's ever happened. So no. I don't the think so. Are too good of a team. Toronto's too injured for it to really happen. Right. And, uh, to touch on Joe, he. I feel like when he isn't in like mentally there, the whole game is done for him. Yeah. So I felt like the thumb, he just wasn't there. Well, and he's probably in so much pain, right? Yeah. Like he's probably, and I, I've talked about this and Jason knows this. I actually hurt one of my ligaments in January and I'm still dealing with it. I mean, and I'm not a seven foot three Cameroonian basketball player, but I'll tell you what, that's what you think. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. And I, I, I'm thinking, I'm like, I can't imagine in your thumb, right? You're a basketball pass and all this stuff. And they're, they're saying it's not as they're saying it's bad, right? But they're not really letting on to how bad it is. So I'm hoping last night maybe everybody was just a little yeah, freaked it, out or whatever. Flat. They lost. Yeah, it, was, yeah, it they, happens. Yeah, to me it happens. I think they're gonna they're gonna be fine. They're gonna win this series. Next series is the one you got to struggle a bit, worry about. But I don't know. No. I mean, it's Jay, Jay's the basketball. Player. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Listen, so I, let's I, now. I now I want to go to. I'm, I'm hoping that they. Well, I was literally just saying this like half hour ago, for business wise. Obviously, they want the Sixers to win. It's right. just it's just better in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a fan myself, yeah. Because are you blow it. are you? Because <laughs> so like you, we talked about earlier, you're a you're a New York guy. Are Man. you a Nets guy? Uh, Knicks. I'm guy? a Knicks fan. Okay, yes. okay. I I, I kind of went back and forth Knicks Nets when I was younger. Yeah, when the Nets were in. Jersey. I feel like if, I'm a Jersey guy. Yeah. So, but then once they moved to Brooklyn, I was like, nah. I'm done. I'm not right. following the Brooklyn. It's right. Too far. I'm not yeah. going over the bridge. No, no, no I'm no, not going like, to Brooklyn. What, that was probably like a seven year ago move. So now it was. Isn't that yeah. crazy? Yeah. So were you a fan of the Nets until seven years ago? Uh, yeah, I was a fan of the Nets. I was more like back when it was like Kerry Kittles. Car yeah, Kerry uh, Kittles. Right. Jay, Jay, yeah. Okay. Jason. Yeah, those days. Okay. Um, but I've always been a Knicks fan since I was since I was younger. I feel like if I so I, since New York has like sixty five thousand teams. I uh, was that what they're up to now? Yeah, sixty five thousand. Okay, yeah. I I always Official thought <laughs> I always thought if I lived in New York, who would my team be? And it's, I think I'd be it's, it's I'd hard. be Knicks. I think I'd be Knicks, but then I would be Yankees. Does that make sense? So most people are it's are Nets, you Jets, Yankees Mets, Mets. and Yankees Giants? That's how most people kind of fall into. Yeah, I'm, I don't think so I'd I'm be Yankees that. Giants. He's a Yankee. He's a I Yankee. feel like I would be that way too. Yeah. But even though I personally hate the Giants as an Eagles fan, which we're going to get to in a second, because I do want to ask you guys what you think about the draft coming up for both of your respective teams. Because Stan, you're a diehard Eagles fan. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Stan's a Northeast Philly guy like me, grew up in Juniata. Yeah. We're like maybe like a couple blocks apart. Yeah. Uh, so he, you know, he knows this fan base. He's a diehard Eagles fan himself. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so real quick, fun yeah. fact. Jason and I played in a flag football tournament at MetLife together. Oh, how fun right? is that? It was yeah. for it was for a Special Olympics. Yeah. Oh. So if you, I forget what I think you have to raise like two thousand dollars. Two thousand. Yeah. Yep, okay. Two thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, and it gets you a spot, and they do like a little like, um, they split all the teams into like four team round robin tournaments. Yeah. So we got to play, and you play on the actual on the actual field. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So this was right after the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Okay. So naturally 
I had my Eagle Super Bowl flag, the score flag. The oh, hat, you're representing. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 You, you showed up in full Jason Kelsey mummery. Like, I'm yeah. ready to play. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and then we didn't score a touchdown. Oh, no. Yeah, we got crushed. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only time that we scored was when we had one of the uh, participants in the Special Olympics on our team, and they, like, let him score. Let him. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... So we take pride in in that part yeah you know, yeah it was yeah, a good deed that you know no it that's was a great day. day yeah that's amazing and you got to play on um uh, at, oh, at Met Met yeah, yeah that, the awesome. experience itself just playing so there i right. i got to play oh, okay. at lincoln financial field that's all awesome. once that's and i i scored a touchdown i Did swear you? to god i have it on video i'll show i'll show it i'm gonna edit that in i'll edit that in after the fact because i have the video i didn't even think about this because i didn't know we were going there but it's probably I, like sometimes you just go there the athletic achievement of like my life because i've always been like a middle of the road kind of athlete like i won city champs for the 800 though in track you know like i it wasn't the two wasn't the four it wasn't the mile it's the 800 that was my race kind of like the where you don't fit into anywhere that's like yeah, just go run the 800 like, yeah okay. yeah but i'm a champ that's all but is. i was good at it right yes yeah, second place city championship cyo 2000 i think i was 12 oh, and that's gosh. probably like the peak of my <laughs> athletic career and then scoring a link or a touchdown at the link so yes did Dre you do a dance after you scored oh my god i like i was waiting to be like carried off of the field and and i wanted <laughs> no and i wanted people to like pour gatorade on me because right. never in my life did i expect to a be playing at Lincoln Financial Field. It was for charity. It was for um, NRG. I, I worked with them. Um, I still work, do some work with them um, just for environmental, all that other good stuff that they do. But yeah, and and I was open and somebody decided today <laughs> they were going to pass the ball. And the video is me. I just was like dying. I'm like, this is the most amazing moment of my life. But now everybody else kind of moved on quickly. And I was like, can we talk about it? Um, but no. Uh, so that's why <laughs> I'm like, what do we have for lunch? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I was like, Wait, what about my touchdown? What about my touchdown? So that's why I'm bringing it up. Like, five well, we got ham sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bringing it up five years later. But the draft is coming up. And as an Eagles fan, how are you feeling about the moves that Howie's made? What do you think we need? Uh, are you a Hurts man. guy? I mean, we could we could probably. So, so I'm not a Hurts guy. Okay, I'm okay, not. okay. However, Why? I, he just doesn't have the arm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Everything else, the intangibles, the mind, the the physical strength, that's all there. He's he just doesn't have the arm. I know. It's 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 a bit it's it's yeah. painful for me because it's like he's let I like him as that guy but I don't think unless you have that option to go down the field and have that right. threat then it's not going to work and I feel like all the maybe all the moves that they've made this year so far have been for like those short yardage passes where they're not going to have to extend the play because he's not really instinctual at that exactly. and um if they don't I, I mean last year they didn't get the reps because of covid but this year I, I, you know I'm kind of wondering I'm intrigued to see what um, Sirianni does and what they kind of decide to do offensively because they do have to get creative with him because they know that he can't throw or and they can't rely on him to throw. But it's like how are I sometimes I think the Eagles forget that every other team improves during the offseason right. too. Well, uh, anyway, well, except for the Giants. <laughs> well, except for the, we're going to get there. <laughs> right. Sorry, I don't mean to jump the no, gun. No, but. no, no, no. no. Well, so, they, I feel like the Giants improve every – like. They sound like they improve every year. And I, him and I have this conversation all they the time. They do. They do. Where I'm like, dude, I don't know. I, yeah, they, maybe yeah. this is the year. Just, I, yeah. I, and I then don't... four weeks in, this isn't the year. Maybe it's next year. <laughs> yeah, well, like, they, you know, Saquon, that acquisition. I, I was scared for the NFC East, you know, with yeah. them with them getting him. And so how do you feel about the Giants this year? Do you think – do you have any – are you optimistic? I've, I've learned to lower my expectations. Okay, that's, that's a healthy place yeah. to be. I now live like that. I yeah. say if I'm net neutral – I'm in a good spot. I mean, we have two. Matt neutral? <laughs> Net. Maybe now not yeah. neutral. <laughs> wow. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. We need to get, you know what we need to get, Mark? One of those. Uh, yeah. Or a uh, <laughs> soundboard. Yeah. yeah, we're yeah we need a soundboard. But again, I, if, you, if you're if you actually watching this, where we post the videos now on YouTube. So if you're watching this, bear with us as we're, you know, trying to put together our studio. It's still a work in progress. Um me and Jason are outside. I don't know if anybody. No, can you tell. can't tell that they're actually outside in the parking lot. <laughs> That's why they're in front of a brick wall. Um. So, so to, what are you feeling about the Giants? I mean, we have year? two top ten picks if we don't trade them. So, I mean, we should improve. I, I was listening this morning. They're talking about getting a D lineman and probably an offensive lineman, which we need. We need offensive line. So I'm obsessed. So I, I don't know. I, I am obsessed with offensive lines. I, I don't know why I. It's my favorite. It's my favorite part of the team to study. I don't know why. They're the most I, lovable. They're the most lovable, and I I feel like they're 
you know, the quarterback is so important, but it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. If your offensive line yeah. is crap, it, right. it's it's all gone. It doesn't matter. And the Eagles, I just uh, that's another conversation that we can have because who knows? But I mean, they're on the up and up. They're on the up and up. Should, uh, they're yeah. on the up and up. I know. Well, we but, can't go down and down anymore. <laughs> no, so we I have mean, to be on the up and up. No, I know. So what do you think they're going to do? You think it's going to be? You said offensive. Linemen. I think we'll probably go offensive lineman with, with. I mean, it's what do we have five and number five and number seven. I think it is. Yes, so let me check. Let I don't think it really up. makes too big of a difference. I think they're going to get the guy from Oregon, the defensive end. I like yeah. Oregon players. I always have Casey Matthews. Yeah, I've always liked Oregon players. But yeah, they five have five. Yeah, they so have I five mean, and seven. So I don't think it really matters if you go offensive five or defensive five, and you know, vice versa. So I just, I just hope we improve. I just, it's, it's frustrating every year thinking like, you know, we could be good. And then after six weeks, you're two and four again, or one and five again. Yeah. Like, what What do you think? It's, do you think that they're just a little lost after like Manning, or it's just uh, what, Eli was my favorite pro athlete were, of all cool. time. I do a great Manning face. Ready? That's pretty good. No, that's awesome. Right? Yeah. I think they were huge. lost with Eli, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the last two years with Eli probably weren't. weren't no, the best. no. Anyway, and I, I I do like Daniel Jones. I think he has potential. Right. Uh, he, he he gets hurt a lot. Um. But he he can run. He's got a good arm. Yeah. I honestly I think it is probably the offensive line that's just not holding up. I mean, without the line, if he's scrambling for his life and Saquon doesn't have a hole to run through, it's what, never, it's what never going to matter. And because he's not going to be able to see, that's the thing. It's like if you can't give your quarterback the time to make the decision, then like I just think it doesn't matter what right. you put around him or what you do. It does. It's never. It's not going to matter. I feel like we also last year. Didn't put like one full game. Like our offense would look good, yeah. but our defense would let up like thirty-five points. Right, right. And in the one game, you know, the defense would hold them to ten. Yeah. We would score three. Yeah. So it was just kind of like you got to put the whole thing together. And I don't know. Again, I've been on. Hoping, the, hoping I've been on that they should trade Saquon bandwagon for a while. He always for like three years stands me like you guys should trade Saquon. Like, always well, not my decision, right? But, but it is. But it is. Jay, look at Jay. Yeah, they, they, would, they, they, would, would, they would listen to me. They would never trade him within the division. No. 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 That's which, uh, which I guess is fine. But so speaking of trades, the Eagles, they've traded 16, 19, 194 to the Saints for 18, 101, 237 and a 2023 first round pick. So do you, does this indicate to you that they're going to go in for a quarterback next year? Yes. Okay. I, I feel like the writing's on the wall too. And everyone's like, no, Hertz is our guy. And I'm like, please stop. Yeah. Please I'm stop. Not... Please stop. You're making these stop. <sighs> you, like these are stopgap acquisitions and decisions that you're making. And everybody knows that the quarterback class this year isn't that great. Right. So it, it, I feel like that's the writing on the wall there. But what do you want the Eagles I, to do? I don't know who the guy's going to be. I, I really don't know where he's at right now. Right. I just I just want him to be the guy. Yeah, exactly. Wherever, sir, wherever you wherever are. Wherever you are. Please just be the guy. <laughs> Whatever college <laughs> right. you're in. Yeah. And I, if, yeah we're going to speak it into existence. So I've been into trying like positive vibes. Yes. We're going to like bring everybody up in the city. So wherever boards. you are, like holding... a vision board, vision vision board. board. we're yeah. going to do a vision board. We'll put it in here and we'll post picture. Uh, you know, we'll figure out who we want. And it's just, it's, we'll put a question mark on its face and it's going to be next Eagles Super Bowl championship quarterback. And Jay right. will be in here just drawing all over. Uh, yeah, I know. I'll, I'll, I'll put a little mustache yeah. on it. Yeah. The devil horns. The devil horns, yeah. yeah. No, it, post Carson Wentz on there again. It should it should be a good draft. I mean, the draft is always fun. And I feel like I, I hate mock drafts personally because I feel like A, they're a waste of time. B, it never goes that way anyway. C, the teams are always trying to outsmart each other. I'm hoping that Howie just keeps it simple this year awesome. as an Eagles fan. You know never, awesome. never. He's always overthinking everything. And now we're with him for three more years. Um, and again, we're we have we're a limited on time, and I could talk about this forever, clearly. But um one more thing that I wanted to kind of talk to talk about, Jason. You went to high school with Kenny Pickett. I, well, I didn't go. I'm a lot older than anybody. <laughs> I'm a little oh. bit older than Kenny. Right. Yeah. So he went um, to your high school. He did go to my high school. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. like it. Do so you, I, I'm, I'm rooting for him. Yes. yes. Okay. That's good. So that's good. Little, did, did you have any famous high school athletes? That you're I did. So I went to oh. I went to high school with Kyle Lowry. Oh. Yeah. And right. I got to see him play while he was there. I was at his basketball games every Friday night. Meek Mill used to rap outside of them it was like this very weird time to be alive and i'm like it's so is philly isn't it and, <laughs> and that's I, the philliest thing i've yeah. ever heard I, i'm not kidding like he used to rap outside of my high school after the basketball games and it was just like a neighborhood thing that everybody kind of participated in it was really you know it was it was great and it was fun but um i had a kicker you had a kicker yeah. who's your kicker kevin kelly 
That sounds he went, right. He went to Penn State. Okay, because where did you go? I went to Neshaminy. You went to Neshaminy. Okay. Yeah, I feel, yeah. yeah, that name's kind of sounds Kevin. Kevin hey, I'm pretty sure he's still the all-time points leader at Penn State. Wow. Yeah. Well, then, look. Look, there you go. Yeah. Look at me, guys. I yeah. know somebody famous. There you go. <laughs> Kevin Kelly and Will Smith. So do you guys, do you have anything coming up that you'd like to share with the millions of listeners to the Experts Podcast? Like, what do you got going on the sports book? Look, playoffs aren't over. The There's so much going on. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have the Sixers NBA championship this year in sports book. Okay. Okay, so great. I'm pretty excited Ooh. about that. Okay, great. Okay, okay great. Okay. Uh, Basically, we have just check out the Bet Parks app. Yeah, um, I'm coming up with new promotions. He's uh, the guy. Every weekend, there's definitely going to be a promotion. We're trying to throw some in during the week. Right. So your best bet, no pun intended, <laughs> uh, is to basically just. I uh, love puns on this program. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> I'm a big pun guy. Yeah, big if pun. You ever get my, pun gal. Yeah, if you ever get my emails uh, for promotions, I always try and throw like, a little pun in there. They're very punny. Uh, very punny. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, yeah, lots of promotions, profit boosts, stuff like that. So just basically pretty much just log in all the time. Yeah. Yeah. See what you can find. Well, awesome, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you this is so much yeah. fun. And I know I feel like we had so I had so much other stuff that I wanted to talk about. We didn't even talk about your trip to Costa Rica, but I can't keep you anymore and we're out of time. Right, Mark? Right. That's a shame. Thank you, producer Mark Feldman. He's keeping me. I get to see him. He goes like this. He just goes like this. He's going to wrap it up because he knows that I can talk for hours. So thank you guys for both joining me today. Make sure that you check out the Experts podcast on Apple, in the Apple Store, download it on Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, the Bet Parks app is now in the Google Play Store. So if you have an Android, you can download it. Like Jay said, tons of promotions on there. And uh, next episode, we're going to talk about the science of winning. I'm actually really excited about this because I'm like putting on like my professor hat and I'm trying to, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the science of winning. We're going to break it down and talk about why winning is fun in sports and gambling and, and just in life because I want you to win too. Thank you everybody and I will talk to you next time. Bye.